Hey guys, me again. So I uh, figured I'd make a little quick video on what I'm doing with my transmission. I finally got the thing out and I am uh, just about ready to put it back in the car. I rebuilt the reverse gear. It was just grinded up a little bit. It was really no point in making a video on just changing parts. So moving along from there. Um, so here we go, dive right in. So this is my T56. It's out of a oh, pretty sure LT1. And um, I adapted it to make it work with a clutch fork because I really didn't want a hydraulic system. It was really easy to do. Really just all I did was make this custom plate. If I can just find a light that works, I can show you guys. There we go. So I, I traced out this custom plate here and all I did was bolt it to the existing holes and where the thrush bearing goes, the hydraulic one, and then I lined up the pivot point for the clutch fork, welded it on there. In behind I basically just took a piece of rebar or just rod stock, measured it out, welded it on the back so this has support and doesn't fly backwards. And then the shaft is off of a, um, oh, it was definitely a Cobra GT because they actually had clutch forks, not like, and, and the, the clutch was a different design than the GM. So that fit perfectly. And then all I had to do was get the uh, bearing out of a Ford. And then I got this uh, Dorman Help clutch fork that comes with like a, a bolt that goes right in there so the thing doesn't move doesn't come out great works great I enjoy it I didn't want a hydraulic clutch and the um, mechanical clutches for these things just were in the billions of dollars so I figured I'd do something myself works fantastic I have no intent of you know mass producing these things but if anybody ever wanted to make one I could definitely show you what I did so a little bit more and help but uh, it's pretty straightforward I just took a piece of paper traced out the, the layout of it cut it out of steel and then measured where the pivot point had to be and then I uh, notched it out on this side so that the clutch fork could go back and forth and also a little bit on the bell housing the bell housing is I didn't get the bell housing from the original LT1 I got the newer style one because uh, of the way the, the slave cylinder is on the older style. I didn't want that. The newer style one just has uh, two holes in it for the hydraulic lines to go through. So all I did was just basically notch that out and made room for my clutch fork. And that's it. Easy peasy. So next we're going to talk about what I'm doing with the speedometer sensor. So in my last video, if you guys saw it, I talked about the Holly 7-inch is it the seven? I don't, I never remember. I think it's the five inch display I bought and it comes with a GPS um, sensor that gives you an accurate readout of your uh, speedometer, your speed. And like I had said, absolute garbage. Just broke right off the first time I went to install it and I was really grumpy and upset about that. So, so then I decided to go on the adventure and try and figure out how I was going to, um, run the speedometer sensor from the transmission into my Terminator X, which is not an X Max, it's just a regular X, but apparently it can be done with some MacGyvery. That would be on to the next thing, where I am going to do my wiring right here. This is the, the plug that comes with the Terminator X kit. It's got all the input and outputs on it. And this is the hall sensor I bought from Tick Performance because the original sensor that's in the T56, which is right here, this guy is a, a VR sensor and you need hall sensors for Terminator X. So I bought this thing and it's supposed to work. We shall see. Three wires, nice and long, should work just fine. Comes with instructions, it tells you what's what. I think uh, blue is a sensor wire, black's a, uh, whatever, we'll get into that. So the next thing I had to do was find out the color coding for this because um, 
the instructions that come with the Terminator X sucks. So I ended up finding, hang on if I can just go through my phone here real quick. Um, library right here. This guy. You guys want to, anybody doing this can just try and screenshot that if you can see it. You probably can't see it, but I guess I can upload it somewhere else. But this is the complete color coding for all the wires on the J1 AB input output uh, harness. And it tells you what you can and can't do with every wire coding. And then from there, you basically just program it on your computer through your Terminator X. And then it's supposed to work. I've seen people on the internet do it, so we shall see. Um, so yeah, I'm going to wire this up and then I will get back to you guys and we'll give it a try and see if it works. And guess what? It didn't work. Well, that's not 100% true. It did kind of work, but it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So I guess this would be the second part of the first section of the video I was making. I guess I'll just merge them together instead of making two videos. But um, I figured it would be useful to just show some people how it panned out in the end. So the sensor actually did work the way it was supposed to. It took me probably a good month to track down how exactly to wire this thing because Tick Performance builds the um, housing for this and they told me that the sensor is made in-house but they wouldn't give me any directions on how to wire it aside from uh, black goes with the sensor your input for the T, the, the, the Terminator. Um, blue is ground and brown is 12 volt power supply. Mmm, nowhere near that. So I contacted them, they couldn't help me out very much on wiring, so I took the serial number off of the sensor itself. It says Cherry Sensor, and there's another company out there who makes and manufactures them, and they have much, much, much better instructions for them. So in the end, what happened was, um, this thing I bought here, um, the Holly 5-inch display, I ended up absolutely hating it to death. I was contacted, I contacted Holly several times to try and get this thing to work. So what originally happened, and I'm sure you've seen it in one of my other videos, was that the little pin inside broke off from when I went to go mount this on the dash in the car. It just, you know, comes with uh, a little display it's somewhere around here. It's not that important. And I just put it right up there on the windshield bumped the little wire in the back that's brass and snapped everything off clean inside there and of course since I broke it Holly said it was my fault and they refused to replace it so um, it still worked perfectly fine I could still you know run through wizards and stuff and just the only feature was the GPS speedometer which was the feature I bought it for so I couldn't fix that, so then I decided I'd buy the Hall sensor because I've seen a couple people on the internet, and I mean like a couple, not that many. I tried hunting down videos for this, and just absolute nightmare. I bought the sensor from Tick Performance. They said it would work fantastic with the Terminator X. I didn't even need the Max. I contacted Holly on how to wire it properly, and they didn't really help me much. And then I found another wiring diagram on the internet. So I'm going to share with you guys how to wire it properly. That's the important part. And it works good if you guys um, are running like your laptop in your car. Because the speedometer, I, I did get the speedometer on my laptop for the Terminator software to work. That worked fine. Worked perfect with the hall sensor. But this 5 inch display, apparently it does have a speed channel. But it does not work with a regular Terminator. You have to have the X Max for it to have the speed sensor channel working. So, absolutely no good. I'm putting it on the internet, I'm selling it. I already ordered the seven inch display with a new um, GPS sensor and I'm done with this thing. Garbage, or sell it, or I don't really care because it's pushed me to the breaking point. I've literally been months, maybe not months, but it's felt like months. So anyways, back at it. Here's the sensor color-coded all that jibber-jabber they told me and I think I even have the instructions around here somewhere but it's not even worth it to look at it it's a piece of paper that's six inches wide by three inches tall that says blue ground black sensor brown 12 volt okay so here's my diagram which is crudely drawn at best 
but um, this is how you're actually supposed to do it. They don't tell you this, but if you're ever wondering how to hook a hall sensor into your Terminator X, this is it. So here's the sensor up here. I have, I'll just use a little pointer here. So here's the brown wire, here's the blue wire, here's the black wire, and there's your sensor. Up here is your ECU, and then here's your input wire that comes off of your little plug-in, your little, I think it's J1 plug for inputs and outputs and stuff like that. Now, I tried every combination to get this thing work the way they told me to get it to work. It didn't work. So what I had to do was, after researching on the internet for I don't know how long and bugging everybody on forums and websites, I took the, they, they suggested to do, use 5 volt power supply, so what I did was I took a sensor I wasn't using, which was my fuel sensor, because I have a, uh, I have a gauge on my, my regulator, so I didn't really care about it, I didn't bother hooking it up. So I took the 5 volt power supply off of that sensor, and then ran it to the 12 volt power supply they told me to run it to. Then from there, you have to make a little T and then run 5 volt power supply and then tie in a 10K ohm resistor and then run that to the sensor wire, which is the black wire. And then from there, that goes to the input, your J1 adapter, whatever, and then that goes into the ECU. I wish somebody would have told me this because a Apparently, according to everybody, it's common knowledge, but when I asked everybody what I was doing wrong, nobody would bother to put this in. Next, the sensor ground, which they say just put to a good, clean ground chassis, that was wrong. That has to go to a low-voltage sensor ground. So, like I said, I stole the, um, the fuel sensor, which had a 5-volt power supply, the sensor wire going to the fuel sensor, and it had a sensor ground that runs back into the ECU. That has to be connected. After you do all that, then the sensor works. And it worked wonderfully. It worked exactly the way it should. And when I figured all this out, I was so happy. I connected it to my laptop. My laptop showed that the speedometer worked. I'd spin the wheels. I would give me a speed reaming. I adjusted everything. And I'm not even going to bother going through how to set that up in the Terminator X. If you want to know, you can ask me how. And, but there's literally a million videos up on the internet how to program it in the Terminator software. But there's no videos on the internet how to actually wire the sensor itself. I think the wiring for this sensor, a hall sensor, and the flex fuel are exactly the same. Um, so, resistor kits. I needed a 10k resistor so i went on amazon as all people would and all i wanted was one or two unfortunately you can't get one or two and i ended up with this fancy little kit of i think 2000 various ohm resistors that i'll never use from here to my next lifetime so i mean it was 10 bucks so whatever i didn't really care that much but i mean if you need one that's where to go get it amazon then you get to harbor these for the rest of your life Anyways, so that's how you wire it in. It works fantastic. I'm sure this sensor would probably work with other uh, displays. Does not work with the five inch display unless you have the X Max. Don't even bother. I This was my last glimmer of hope after I had um, broken the wire off and it ended up not working. So, oh well. So yeah new display is coming and whether I didn't even bother putting the sensor back in I just put a plug in I just said to hell with that I'm not even bothering with that anymore um, that's about it um, I'm gonna try and put up some more videos later on I got my new rims on which I absolutely love I had the car outside yesterday I ended up uh, getting the Krager soft 8 from which I'll try and show you, but you can't really see. <coughs> Excuse me. They were turned out really good. I really like them. And also, I got rid of my um, my True Duels, which, if you'd see, are not True Duels. I went and got a Universal X Pipe kit from Summit, and it was on special around Christmas time. And I welded it all up, and it sounds absolutely phenomenal with my Black Widow exhaust. The exhaust that I had on prior was probably the exhaust that was originally on the car from 
when I built it, started building it maybe like six years ago. And I modified it and I chopped it up many times. And I, I kept it just because, you know, trophy. But yeah, as you can see, it goes from adapter to adapter to fix that part to really terrible bend to another really terrible bend to I don't think it bent properly so I sliced it and bent it some more and welded it back up to another adapter to another adapter and on top of it it was uh, split on the back side and the other side looks pretty much similar so now I actually have a, a real working beautiful exhaust and uh, yeah as soon as the weather's a little nicer I'm going to take it outside now that I got this beautiful GoPro, I'm going to start making some videos of doing some pulls out in the road, and which will be a while yet because it's starting to snow. But, um, I don't know, maybe I'll post some videos of skidooing and people like that, I guess. Anyways, if you have any questions, if you ever wanted to do a setup like this or go through all the wiring, I'm not a professional, but after this experience, I've been through every known situation to try and get sensors and programming running so I'd like to think it was a good learning experience and if anybody ever needs help I'm always uh, I'm always open to help people so enjoy